Greetings and welcome to Vanderbilt University School of Nursing's Informatics 101. I'm Patty Sengstack, and I'm the director of the Master's Program in Nursing Informatics. And I'm Alvin Jeffrey. I'm a postdoctoral fellow with the Department of Veterans Affairs and also on faculty at Vanderbilt Nursing Informatics. And I'm Carrie Real. I am a nurse informaticist and usability specialist with the Center for Research and Innovation and System Safety here at Vanderbilt. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> and, it's a mouthful. And before we go on, can I just brag on you just a minute? Are you not a graduate of the nursing informatics program here? I am. Oh. Class of 2014. 2014. How long have you been um, working in the field of usability? Uh, coming up on five years. Wow. So you can imagine that today's topic is probably something related to usability. So it's a term that we use in informatics that... You know, sometimes I think people get a little bit confused about what it is. So in this segment, we're going to kind of unpack the term usability. So the first question I'll throw out there is, what is this concept of usability? And for an informatics nurse, why is usability important? Oh, you're both looking at me. So uh, <laughs> when she told me she has five years of experience in usability, I'm thinking, why am I even on this panel? But um, I'll get us started and give you my kind of naive understanding of what it is. I, when I think of usability, I think of human-computer interaction or this idea that uh, you've got a person and you've got this technology. And within the normal routine of doing things, or sometimes we call it a workflow, there's this, ideal, ideally, there's a synergy <laughs> that allows the human to use the computer or the technology to improve the workflow. Um, and that's both individually as well as within the teams. Because in healthcare, many times, most of the time, it's a team effort that a lot of people are using a lot of different technologies all around one patient or group of patients. And so usability could go from that one-on-one -on -one interaction to the whole team. And I think... That's my naive understanding. Carrie, do you have something more uh, <laughs> that's, that's formal? That's a great point. Let's let the experts speak. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm done now. <laughs> uh, well, I guess probably the most common definition of usability that you hear out there comes from the ISO definition, and it really encompasses three core elements, efficiency, effectiveness, and satisfaction. And so when we're talking about a healthcare uh, field um, where it's high risk, there's potential for high consequences, um, I feel like you can't separate patient safety. So my team always adds a fourth one in there of safety. Um, because if you've got, you know, if you have a website and you're selling clothing and somebody, a poorly designed visual display causes somebody to order the wrong size of a jacket, Heavens, right? you're going to have a frustrated customer, probably some extra costs for returns, but the consequences are on a completely different scale than they can be in healthcare, where if you have a poorly designed visual display, and a nurse misinterprets like sliding scale insulin instructions, you can have significant harm to the patient, a drug error, um, an incorrect dose administered, and, and depending on the situation, things could end up catastrophic. Wow. So safety really can't be separated mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. um, and usability is particularly important for nursing informaticists because um, it's one of the core tenets. If you look at the scope and standards of practice for nursing informaticists, um, usability and incorporating human factors um, and user-centered design concepts, both principles and methods throughout your practice is one of those core tenets that, and it's mentioned throughout the guide um, of why that's important. So you used a couple of terms, human factors and user-centered design. Could you break those down just a little bit for me and what those mean to you? Sure. Human factors is a fairly broad field um, that really is just about designing products and systems and tools that um, maximize human potential and are safe and, and as, as usable as possible. It's a broad field and usability is, is a component within that. Okay. Um, ergonomics is another subdivision of human factors that probably many nurses are familiar with. From proper body mechanics and lifting and, and equipment design to reduce injury and, st and mm -hmm. strain. Um, User-centered design is one of the engineering methodologies that we use, sort of the framework to how you build a usable product, whether that's a medical device or um, a software system, an electronic health record. And it's a, it's a framework that you can follow that will help 
you hopefully get to the most usable design that is possible given your constraints and resources. Okay, cool. I'm going to geek out just a little bit. I think it's really cool uh -oh, that she brought up engineering. Because uh -huh. when I think about nursing, I don't think, a, like, that's a totally different major and everything. But I'm hearing you say that informatics nurse specialists may actually be working with engineers. Is that? Well, I work with human factors engineers okay. on our team um, and software engineers and folks that are designing the different technologies. So, um, it, Definitely, with usability, you are designing and helping them to build um, systems. So hmm. there's some overlap there in terms of interacting with those folks on the team. So, so all of that work, if I could put it just really simply, would be creating systems that nurses interact with, that when they look at it, they don't say things like, I have no clue what to do on this screen, right? So it's, it's intuitive, it's clear, you know, and I think of you know, doing my Google search, you know, there's just that one field right in the middle of the screen. It's pretty, pretty clear as to what you need to do. So I guess intuitiveness of, it would be a concept of usability? Definitely. Yeah. Um, that's something we hear all the time. You want it to be intuitive if, if um, that they can look at it and what is there present in the interface um, and on the computer screen or on the device interaction screen um, makes it clear what you should do, what, what options are available for you to do, and how you would proceed with the task to accomplish your goal. I think even more simply, I, I heard someone say once that interfaces are like jokes. If you have to explain them, they're probably not very good. <laughs> and I mean, that does that resonate with usability? Right. I think that's... And you, when you I say definitely. interface, so now I'm going to explain your joke. <laughs> when, you say, when you say interface, you mean the screen that the that someone's interacting with, yeah. right? Yeah. And you shouldn't or the have buttons. To, you shouldn't have to explain it or what button to press yeah. or what to do next. But I'm just going to say this. We see that all the time. We see mm -hmm. systems that, that are, you know, somewhat challenged with their usability. And so what, is there research happening now to, you know, I know you're doing a lot of research in your area. I'd love to, you know, if you would maybe share an example of something, maybe it's a, um, you know, a piece of clinical decision support that, um, an alert that pops up to a nurse that's using an electronic health record. Is that good um, usability or is there some research around that or was that like a really blabbering, rambling there. question? <laughs> Feel free to take whichever yeah, one. Yeah, talk about whatever well, you want. I, I was going to go back to the, to the thing about the interface and just kind of add to that term of the user interface, something we talk about all the time. We often call it the UI. Um, and when we talk about the interface or the UI, we're talking in a very broad sense. It can be anything that the user interacts with. Mm -hmm. Not just the computer screen that they're seeing, but also the mouse, the keyboard, um, the help manuals, online help files, whatever those, um, any component of the system that the user would interact with. Okay. And then... Maybe you could repeat the question about research. <laughs> I was research. wondering, you, I know that in your area you're doing some research on usability. And in fact, just before we started um, uh, filming, you mentioned um, a methodology that you use to test usability using videos or, you know, what is that all about? We do a lot of different projects going on and a lot of different research. We work on grant-funded research projects, as well as internal consulting operational projects. So um, I see a wide range of things. And usability testing is one of the key tools um, that we use in that. Um, there's part of that user-centered design process that I mentioned earlier. Um, usability testing comes in. After, so you start out in the beginning, one of the first steps is to get out there and understand the environment of use. And you have to understand where these products are being used um, and how they're being used, the context of use, um, because that can make a difference in how you design something. If there's going to be very poor lighting, um, that would be something that you'd need to take into account if you're making a display on an on a infusion pump or something for that nature. Mm -hmm. And so nurse informaticists are really well suited for that because we already have that baseline understanding and comfort with the clinical environment. Yes. So we're, we're very well positioned to be able to help translate that to the technical team. And then the other component of that when you're out there doing some of that preliminary research before you begin testing is understanding the user's needs and really defining those. 
And this is about what are they trying to accomplish? What information do they need? Uh, what, what are the tasks that they have to complete? And so that you can make sure you design a system that does what it need, they need it to do in the way they need it to do. It needs to be useful, not just useful, uh, usable. Then once you've kind of got that background user research done, that's when you would begin your design and testing phases of, mm -hmm. of the cycle. And early usability testing is often called formative testing. And that can be as simple as going out with pieces of paper with sketches on them, post-it notes, and just sitting down with users and having them walk through um, some of their tasks and, and how they would organize information. And does this screen organization make sense to you? What about this menu? Is this the way you would expect this to be displayed? And you can get a lot of really great feedback before you start expending any resources actually developing something. Informative testing should be repeated um, throughout that design process up until you start to have, so you start out with like low fidelity prototypes, which can, like I said, be a piece of paper, mm -hmm. all the way up to um, interactive screens and prototypes that aren't functional software, they're just the, the interface for the user. Um, and then as you move towards the end of the cycle and you have um, a product that's getting closer to being complete and ready for release, then you would begin more of a summative type of testing. And that is where you've got users in and you're really validating and verifying the product that you've built, that it does what it's intended to do, it's usable to users, there's not any major safety risks you haven't. And so a lot of, those, a lot of the early testing can be done out in the field at the users in their work area. Um, doesn't matter. We have a usability lab in our center that we use for some of the testing and there's we've got one of those one-way mirrors that has oh, the, the, that like C in fun. the interrogation <laughs> rooms so try to keep it low-key but there's the participant side where they come in and there's it's set up like a workstation we have a workstation on wheels to kind of simulate the environment um, and a desktop setup and then the other side is where observers can be and they can watch the process other members of the team and, and see the feedback and see actual users interact with their product, which can be very eye-opening. What are you looking for when you're, when you're watching them interact with it? What are, you, what are you looking for as you're watching them? Great question. I mean, <laughs> honestly, we're looking for things that are working well and are a good design and it's intuitive. Um, you hear the term user-friendly a lot, which kind of means, might mean different things to different people. But that they're able to complete the task that they want to complete. Mm -hmm. So typically in testing, we create realistic real-world tasks, which is very important. Um, it's very different from quality assurance testing where you're kind of going through a set script right. and you have a very uh, well-defined sequence of things you're going to click on and attempt to do um, to make sure that things work properly. This is more, can users actually accomplish their goals with the software? I, I thought you were going to say you're looking for like a furrowed brow <laughs> or, a, or, a, or a shaking of the... Body of language the can really communicate a lot. Actually, we have special software that we use um, mm -hmm. to, you mentioned video. Um, uh, we have special software. We, we use Moray, in our, which is one of the standard usability softwares in our mm. lab. And that records the screen, so everything the user clicks on, anything they type. And then we also have a little picture-in-picture -picture camera that captures their face. So you can oh, see where okay. they're looking on the screen, uh, where their attention is drawn, and then that, those furrowed brows uh -huh. and the frustrations. And then, of course, we record the audio component of it, too. So any comments uh -huh. that they make and yeah. exclamations. And um, so you really get a sense when the user's struggling with a task. Um, so I mentioned we're, we're looking for things that went well in the task, but of course we're also looking for things that people struggle with. Mm -hmm. And um, so we give them a realistic task, something that is described to them in goal-oriented terms. Mm -hmm. um, don't not go to this screen and, and select this, mm -hmm. but you want to mm -hmm. administer um, your 10 a.m. medications. And so they would then approach that a task that task from, in a natural way of like, okay, well, this is what I would do in the real world. And so mm -hmm. we try to simulate that as much as possible. How you important know, is it? Go ahead. You brought up, you've asked me about big data before. Right. They're collecting a lot of data when they do this, and that requires an immense amount of, of analysis and different analytical techniques that 
the data nerd in me is just very excited about. I think that's so cool. <laughs> yes, you, qualitative data, quantitative data, and just images and audio is so much. I think that that's just fascinating and such a specialty field that you really have to, I think, spend some time in to, to gather the expertise that would be needed to make sense of all of that. That's very cool. How important is it to, um, you mentioned having the users come to this lab. How, how important is it to have the people that are going to be using the system come and actually test it? I think it's essential. I mean, that, that is... About like foundational. Yes, that is <laughs> absolutely a requirement yeah. for good usability testing. Um, it's okay to use some of the subject matter experts that are on your design team, your development team. Um, nurse informaticists are great for some information and helping to develop the scenarios and do some preliminary testing. Mm -hmm. But as a nurse informaticist, I'm not a representative end user anymore because mm -hmm. I have specialized knowledge and I am familiar with the system that is being tested and developed. Um, same thing for those on the development team, especially if it's mm -hmm. their baby and, and they're, they're right. very knowledgeable about what their expectation for how people are going to interact with the system. So getting some representative users that um, haven't, aren't familiar with the system, that if it's a new system you're developing like from a development perspective, they weren't part of the project team making those decisions as to how to make the screens look. Um, or if you're working with a system that's already in place, ones that use it in the actual real world, it's very important to have them come in and do that. Cool. Yeah. I want to just emphasize that, you know, you mentioned you're a specialist in this, and I think that is so exciting, and that uh, even though it's, it might be kind of sad to be stepping away from not being the end user, you, it seems like you really light up and re the, this sort of work resonates with you, and I find that very inspiring, so thank you for sharing with us. Thanks. It is very rewarding work. I enjoy it very much, and while I'm not on the front lines with patients um, directly anymore, I am still contributing in a very direct way. I advocate for our clinicians that are going to be using this system. I'm the one always saying, guys, this is not going to be very efficient in the real world. Like, we, we need to try to put some more resources into this or rethink this aspect of the design because the feedback we're getting shows this is going to be problematic. Um, and then also some of our projects touch on patients and that kind of thing. So there can be some interaction with patients in that regard, too. Um, and really all the systems that we use in the healthcare setting ultimately reverberate down to the patients. Too. Awesome. I love it. Yeah, That's thank, such a good point. And so. thank you for saying that. And, you know, it's a point I wanted you to bring out, and you did so perfectly, <laughs> that it's the end users, the people that are actually using the system that really need to be part of the, you know, the usability testing and the design. Uh, you know, it's, that is Informatics 101. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's stuff that our program is going to teach, at least touch on a, a wide variety of aspects of measuring usability and engaging right. in usability and being a part of that. So We want to create systems that the nurses can use and help to improve care delivery. Mic drop. Can, we can't <laughs> drop these, can we? No, probably, <laughs> probably not. not. <laughs> well, I want to wrap us up. Uh, I think you know some of the words that I heard were efficiency, effectiveness, satisfaction, and safety are all key elements of usability. Uh, it is creating systems... Uh, with interfaces within context and considering tasks and goals. And I just uh, really enjoyed having you uh, on our, our show today. Uh, I want to take one last opportunity to, to thank our guest, Carrie Real, uh, And thank you all for listening in. Uh, we've enjoyed uh, sharing this content with you. We hope you'll share it with your colleagues and friends, either via social media uh, or via email. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions for future episodes, please send us uh, a note at the address below. Until next time.